Hi guys, uh, my name is Walt. I'm talking about comics. If you don't know my channel, this is the perfect entry point because uh, today I will talk about my favorite books of 2017. Uh, I'm probably the last one to do so, uh, but well, it took me a while. I had to finish a few more books which were on my to read list. Um, in general, I have to say 2017 was not my favorite year in comics. Maybe also because I um, was very much into fiction. I got back into fiction re reading and also non-fiction stuff, a lot of philosophy, political stuff. So it was very intellectually challenging. Um, but for that reason, somehow comics, I could only enjoy in their purest form as, as floppies, as monthly books. Mm, and especially the more, um, let's, let's say challenging books, uh, they didn't challenge me. So um, this is what I want to talk about firstly, um, somehow the letdowns of, of the last year. One of them being now, I have did a, I, I did a video on it, but I never released it because the lightning was, uh, was so bad. Uh, however, I won't go deep into it. This is a new anthology by Fantagraphics and it features the biggest names, biggest talents of underground comics. Um, and um, well, I have to say, uh, except for um, Noah van Cyber, who I really like, but he, who's not doing in here at least something super special. This is another autobio book uh, episode. Um, all the other artists are Quite of a letdown. I mean, not artistically. They're all exceptional um, crafts people, but their storytelling is lacking massively, and uh, there is a lot of virtue signaling going on, not only in politics, but also uh, now it 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 comes to culture too, and. It gets on my nerves. I have uh, developed an antenna, which is sometimes even unfair. You know, if I read about something which is deemed to be important or, um, you know, this is stuff that uh, you have to read. It's a must read because you have to know about these things. Uh, I'm already like wary and I I'm already like dubious if this also will be a great work of art because this is why I read things. I don't read things uh, like an article in a newspaper to inform myself or uh, to be to be lectured uh, to. This I do when I read nonfiction, but when I read fiction and art and um, consume art and and cinema and books, fiction books and and comics. I want to be sucked into it in an artistic way and I want to explore the world through different eyes. Yes, I want to do it, um, but this didn't help me. So now is the best what Underground Comics has to offer. Uh, probably not, but it's at least um, a good sample, um, sample group. Can you say that? And it was very disappointing. Um, I, I, lose, I used to uh, read Mome back when it came out, also Fantagraphics. I used to like Drawn and Quarterly, which was also an anthology book by Drawn and Quarterly. And, um, well, or maybe I'm just getting old and I don't get the young artists. Could be true. I mean, it's not impossible. Another letdown was my favorite thing is Monsters. It's in everyone's top 10, well, almost everyone's, at least people who like graphic novels. And I have to say it's super impressive art-wise. It's incredible. So basically you can open it randomly and look at those fantastic um, images, which, you know, even if they're not to your taste, you know, they're, they're more on the Robert Crumbian side of, of artwork. But man, this is some exceptional endeavor, uh, especially because this book is over 400 pages long. Uh, but it's a slog to read, really. It's a slog to read. And 
I, I, I tried to read it a few months ago and after one third I had to give up and um, I just finished it yesterday and I have to say it's all over the place. I mean there are bits which are really interesting. Uh, it's about it's a coming of age story basically about a girl who's um, obsessed with her neighbor who died. Um, maybe she was killed so she's doing the detective thing it's like a mystery and um, then we dabble into her family life her um, different relationships to different people nothing really it's not coherent at all it's like a moment here a moment there um, there uh, there is homosexual love in it there is pedophilia in it there is holocaust in it it's so much it's just too much and nothing is really explored through the depth what i really liked about this kind of attitude was that it's not um forcing you to feel things and this, this i found to be really um uh, the point of how do you say the perspective of the author uh i i liked and i respected um in that it showed a lot of characters experiencing really traumatic things but not becoming victims and this is i think a, a good message uh, but there was no real story here except for like i said little bits here and there which were touching um yeah that is it's just not it's it's not a good comic i'm sorry it's also not really a comic in the beginning it's more like an illustration book with text okay <laughs> but i won't be also i won't be bitching about uh underground stuff only which is unfair per se because they don't have many readers as it is uh this is another uh, book which was hyper hyped uh by donny cates who's the man of the moment um the up-and-coming hotshot uh, now at Marvel, this he released through Image Comics, and uh, this was really bad. I mean, uh, this was like one star review bad for me. It's a family story um, where everything is talked through. Everything. There is no. I mean, there is a big metaphor in 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 the story. It's it's um, a, a story about. A small family and a, um, a grandfather who has dementia and who can only remember things when he's grabbing this gigantic sword that you can see here. The art is okay. It's it's nothing special. Um, so yeah, he has to fight all kinds of things. Uh, basically, to fight himself back into reality. Um, so that he can come to uh, to terms with uh, with his sickness and also with his son but like i said it's um it's too much dialogue to everything every emotion is on the lips uh everything has to be talked about and i found it to be really annoying and i didn't like it at all okay now we move to a few mentions. I have to be fast. I'm sorry that I'm speaking so fast. Uh, just a few honorable mentions and then we'll get to my top 10. All right. Uh, okay. So those are books which are maybe just too short in their run or whatever. I, I'm not completely sure if this they will turn out great or not. Or you know, maybe started strong and fizzled out a little bit. Um, we'll start with Sync, which is an indie book from Glasgow, where I was uh, a week or so ago. And this is a really, really horrifying horror book. Um, a bit like a horror Twilight Zone, uh, in which like every issue is one episode. And it's really very strong. It's very good. It's by um, Comic Stripe, which is a small indie publisher. And I have to say, I was really afraid of Glasgow before before going there because of this book. Uh, the author talks about how Glasgow used to be like this, or still is this super dangerous city at night and whatever. And I was walking a lot of 
uh, kilometers at night in Glasgow. Nothing, nothing ever happened. Super nice people. I don't know what this guy's talking about, but the way he's doing it is fantastic. If you haven't checked it out, um, you should sample the trade when it comes out. It's now at number three, I think. Defenders is really good. Um, Bendis is leaving uh, Marvel 40C and he, this is probably his last great series at Marvel. It's, um, I haven't checked, I haven't bothered with the Netflix, Netflix series. I'm not big on superhero shows and, and films anymore. I, I prefer to, to, to read the comics when it comes to superheroes. And this was a quite a perfect uh, superhero book, street level superhero book. Um, you can see this guy can plot. I'm, I'm talking about Bendis. He writes really good dialogue. Uh, I know some people are annoyed by it, but um, the fact alone that his style is so um, recognizable um, and so, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it, it has such an own style, his, how his characters uh, interact and, and talk to each other. Uh, it's evident that he has, he's very distinct. He's, he's, he's one of a kind. And this is why he's moving to DC. Uh, I think he's done everything at Marvel what he could do. And he's written almost every one. And um, yeah, this was a fun book. The art by David Marquez, I think, yes, was also very good. Um, if you wanna check out a um, street level book from Marvel, this is it. Um, another book that I really loved in its first year was Shape the Changing Girl. I still enjoyed the second half of the run. It will be relaunched as Shade the Changing Woman very soon. Um, it's by DC's Young Animal and it's a beauty to look at. I mean, still, this is like uh, the, the, the admission price um, for this art is worth it alone, you know, just for the art, just for the coloring. It's super, super beautiful. The story was uh, was decent. I still like the style of storytelling, which is a bit more, a, a, a bit like a, like a dream, um, but there was something about it which made me feel that it's a bit too, too dreamy for its own sake. I mean, it's cool when the style, the writing style uh, and the composition is a bit wandering, but it would have been nice to have the conflict to be a bit more precise and um, more things to to really happen really. Um, having said that, it's still very close to my heart and I can't wait for the new series that will start soon. Another strong, uh, two strong number ones which I read, which I pre-ordered the, the trades for is God Shaper by Simon Spurrier and Jonas Gunface and Slasher by Charles Forsman. Um, I haven't read enough of them to really hype them up for uh, um, a yearly review, but those were two of the strongest uh, debuts that I've read last year. Deathstroke was, um, I have to catch up with Deathstroke. I think I've, I've missed, uh, I haven't read the last four issues or so, but what I've read before that uh, was really enjoyable. It's one of the best superhero books on the market by Christopher Priest, who's who's gaining momentum right now. He's also writing Justice League. And um, another short uh, series, a mini series was announced, Deathstroke vs. Batman, which should be pretty cool. So um, this is intelligent, uh, multi, um, how do you call this? When, what? <laughs> it's not just one story, there are many stories happen at the same time and they're somehow intertwined. I, I have forgotten parallel storytelling or something like that. He's the master at it. Really fun book. Black Bolt, um, a promising new writer we have here, a promising new guy called Saladin Ahmed and a fantastic art by Christian Ward. This is why I was uh, into it very much. It was more the art than the writing, which uh, was decent. It started out very strong and, and promising, but then it kind of didn't move fast enough. Uh, out of this 
uh, prison. Uh, Black Bolt is, is in a prison and he has to get out. That's the story. Um, and yeah, it was pretty good, but not quite there yet. Um, so we'll see where uh, Saladin Ahmed will go next. I've read that he will launch Exiles for Marvel. I will definitely check that out. And he's a new voice that's interesting. Um, another good book was Moon Knight. It started out very strong. Uh, the middle was also still pretty strong and the end was a bit fizzling out. Um, having said that, the art by um, Greg Smallwood was fantastic. And, you know, it's a Jeff Lemire book. It's definitely still excellent till the end. But uh, I think, you know, you kind of see it coming. That, I mean, that was the main thing. If there would have been a little surprise towards the end, I guess this would have uh, found its entry into the top 10 because it's a very good book. And I will definitely buy a hardcover if it's oversized because of the art and the coloring by Jordi Belair. Fantastic. Uh, also very nice, but I haven't read the second trade yet, The Flintstones. I've just finished the first one a few weeks ago and it was really good. It's, um, yeah, it's a satire. Um, it's our society mixed with the Stone Age. So it's a, politically, a political commentary. It, this is obvious and it's also, also obvious uh, where the sympathies lie for uh, Mark Russell. The R by Steve Pugh is really cool. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really fun book. Uh, Extremity was talked about a lot uh, last year. I think it's one of uh, Image's new, may maybe not hit books, it's not on saga level, but it's still um, doing pretty well. Image is releasing a lot of new books. Every month they have like two or three or f even four new series launching and most of them don't make it into their double digits. And this one here, he's going strong. Um, Daniel Warren Johnson is doing everything on it. He's writing, he's um, drawing it, and he's also coloring it. And it's, it's a cool, I would say like kind of a Star Wars story, you know, uh, it's the, the Imperium and the Rebel Force are fighting it out and the Rebels, just to, 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 be, to be able to, to, to compete with this, with the omnipotency of, of, the, um, of the Imperium, they have to be really, really tough. And this toughness makes them do things that are not morally acceptable. And this is what the book is about. It's not super challenging intellectually, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Maestros is also a new book by Steve Scross uh, and coloring by Dave Stewart. And man, this is first and foremost uh, a beauty to look at. Super detailed, linear clear, um, almost no hatching here. It's, it's really pretty and it's very, very funny. It's, um, well, the title gives it away. It's a magic a high fantasy uh, satire, I would say. Uh, again, with political undertones, I think it's normal right now. Everything is politicized. So is high fantasy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Uh, three issues out. We'll see how this turns out. All right. Now we move into the top 10. I have to check the time. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm doing fine. All right, uh, we'll start with... Um, so I, I told you in my introduction, normally in my top 10 or top 20, there are a lot of graphic novels because as much as I enjoy reading the monthly books, they're just fast, they're fast entertainment, nothing bad about it. I don't want to judge it in any way. I'm just saying, you know, there's stuff for entertainment and there is stuff which should make you experience something which is maybe not even super enjoyable but it will stay with you and it will, it will make you think 
and uh, in that way, you know, it's uh, a more lasting uh, thing that the superhero of the week book. Uh, but this year was the last year was pretty weak on graphic novels. I thought those were two that I still enjoyed. They weren't hyper excellent, but they were pretty good. Um, once a stick Angelica folk hero by Michael DeForge. Michael DeForge is um, kind of a genius <laughs> uh, in his. This is like a comic strip. And the format gives it away. It's a comic strip uh, about um, a girl who moves into the, into the forest and lives there um, with animals and stuff. She's doing things. It's, it's hard to explain what is going on in here. Only that it's more or less a coming of age book uh, in which a young woman blossoms and um, really, really weird things like little worms have their little stories and um, different animals who are also going through crises. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird book. Um, but it's also, um, the storytelling alone, I can't really, I had, I should have prepared this one because it's, it's a more complex way of storytelling and the way that, that Michael DeForge is telling stories through comics, through sequential storytelling is very impressive. He's, he's a very, very talented uh, writer. This is not his strongest work, I think. Uh, it's very experimental, but there are still things to be felt and there are still little nuggets of story to be, to be read. So it's not complete um, experimental formal bullshit. It's not art pour l'art. It's still a graphic novel and I liked it. Um, Still uh, on spot 10, uh, like the uh, of my top 10, is uh, um, Cosplay, Cosplayers by Deshaw. Uh, Deshaw is sharing <laughs> the 10th uh, position with Michael DeForge. He's um, on the other side of the, of the equation. I mean, he's also formally experimenting in his uh, um, bigger works. But this is a minor one and I was very very thankful for for this minor so to put my minor work because it's just about story it's about two characters two girls who are doing cosplay and are filming themselves and putting stuff on YouTube and um, yes it's not very it doesn't sound very spectacular but uh, it's very very nice to read about it and they feel super real they feel like real like two real girls who are doing it this thing right now and he's documenting it they talk like normal people and um, they interact with others and it's it was a pleasure to read it's very charming um, it's I think a collection of different episodes he released online probably or in single issues I have one single issue I recognized I read it um, before so this might just be a collection if you have the issues or if you can read it online. Give it a shot. It's, it's really cool. It's charming. Even if you're not into cosplay, which I'm not at all. Uh, this was a good book with real story, real characters. Well done, Mr. Shaw. All right. Next up is an image book. So um, for me, this was the strongest image book of the year. It was Redlands. Um, and it's a funny beast because in a way I kind of didn't want to like it <laughs> because it has uh, what I what I said, said about in my introduction. It's not, uh, it's not art for itself. It also has a strong message which is lingering all the time. It's ugly, it's ugly face and wants to lecture you on stuff. Um, but I was able to forgive and forget and ignore and it was 
the one book that I was really looking for every month to get. So this is a very good sign. This is why uh, I sh you should buy um, monthly books in the end, right? Uh, because you're eager to know how this will continue. And it's a book about witchcraft and sadly also about race relations. Uh, sadly, because it's not... It's not hard. It's not felt. It's not heartfelt. I'm sorry. It. it whatever. I don't want to get into trouble. Um, it's a good book. It's uh, written b uh, and drawn by. Um, no, it's written by Jordi Belair and drawn by Vanessa Del Rey. Uh, and I. I want to show you a little bit of the art, which is very unique, and the atmosphere and everything is wow. Really, really good. It's a horror book and um, you should check it out in trade. Um, I, you know, you can tell that I really liked it because the trade is $10 for six issues, but I still got the single issues. So it's that good. All right, next up is um, probably a surprise for you. It was for me, New Superman. Uh, when I was thinking, well, which superhero books did I really enjoy last year? I haven't read exactly those three. I haven't read yet. Uh, I have to catch up with it. But uh, whenever I, I catched up and, um, and read New Superman, it was a joy. Um, it's, it's what superhero books should be like. Uh, firstly, um, every issue is very fleshed out. It's, um, you can see it here. It's very dense. There's a lot going on. Um, you get something for your buck, right? Uh, secondly, it's just, you know, it's 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 a coming of age superhero tale. A young man who, who tries to be a better person and a good superhero. Obviously, he's Superman. He has to be great. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure uh, going on. Um, for him uh, through his family through the Chinese regime because uh, this is um, so set in China and I think that uh, Jin Yang uh, who's writing this has done a, a tremendous job uh, to make you really care about this very generic idea you know hey let's have a Chinese Superman mm, okay great <laughs> and this turned out really really good uh, so yeah it also stands for what DC is doing very well right now, namely, just like, be superheroes, let superheroes be superheroes and, and, and just tell those stories. Uh, with a little bit of naivete, you need this. It's not a format that can work only when taken very seriously. It can work sometimes when it's taken seriously, like here. Uh, this is a, a successful mix of both. It's serious and it's superhero-y and campy at the same time. It's Batman White Knight um, by Sean Murphy. He's doing everything here. He's writing and drawing and man, this is a fun, fun book. Uh, the same that I uh, said about Redlands um, is true here. It's Whenever it comes out, I'm really eager to read it first. It's a joy to, to read. It's very well told. It's meaty. It's, um, it also has this feel of, uh, of a late 80s Batman book. Um, we know that Sean Murphy is a big fan of, Sean, uh, of Frank Miller. Uh, uh, you can see it in his art and uh, it also shows in his storytelling. Um, it's very much about it, it's it's a moral tale where um, once again the question is asked if if Batman is doing the the good thing after all is he a moral person or not big questions in superhero comics basically the the main question right this is what it's all about all the time all right uh, Kyle Higgins and Jorge Fornes did a little mini series for Dynamite called Magnus Robot Fighter. No, it's not Robot Fighter anymore. Well, there used to be a Magnus Robot Fighter, um, a gold key character, which later was uh, released by Valiant Comics. And now they did a female version of it. 
uh, which um, was a great success, you know. Uh, true, uh, for older fans, there's not much recognizable Magnus in here anymore. They could have just called it something differently. Uh, so it's a bit misleading and I get when stuff like this is happening and it's hap it happened at Marvel a lot. I get that some people are saying, well, why not just call it differently and then release it at on its own? Because it's not really appealing to the old Magnus fans. Um, but you know, it kind of worked with me. I, will, I used to like Magnus, the old series, and I'm not sure that I have given it a shot would it have would have would have would the title would have been a different one so um it worked with me and i don't mind come on guys relax uh, if you don't like it just don't buy it it's as simple as that and this one was really good it it's it could have been like an image mini series um the level of craftsmanship and and storytelling was fantastic and um if you like intelligent sci-fi about virtual reality, AI and such, um, give it a shot. It's also a noir. So I won't retell the whole story. I did this a few times when I reviewed the book and I have to hurry, but it's a good book. All right, we're now at, I don't know, we're, we're coming to the top five. Oh fuck, I only have 10 minutes left, not even. Okay, next up is a book that I uh, discovered through the Comixology sale recently. And I remembered, man, I, I still have the volume one, I think. I don't have to buy it. I already own it. I gave it a read and I loved it. It was fantastic. And it's a weird concept. Um, I just finished volume two and I'm right in the middle of uh, volume three right now. And it's basically the wire with, uh, with kaijus. Kaijus are, kaiju is a genre, used to be I think a film genre in which uh, Japanese monsters, uh, all kinds of weird creatures <laughs> are, uh, are fighting it out or are attacking Japan and in this comic the monsters are living with humans and um, they're difficult to handle because they're very aggressive and they're gigantic and very dangerous. So this is about um, a prison where uh, the bad ones are um, incarcerated. And um, well, the, the relations between those different characters and the different groups in society and everything. So it's basically the wire, really. Uh, I don't know if it's as good as The Wire, which is, in my book, at least the best TV show of all time, but it's um, very, very unique. The art needs some getting used to, but if you if you get used to it, you start to love it because it's very, very um, touching and very, very subtle. You wouldn't you wouldn't see that at first glance, but it is. It's by Xander Cannon, who used to work with uh, Alan Moore. And yes, it is intelligent, uh, but it's much more enjoyable than an Alan Moore comic. It's, it's just more fun to read. There are a lot of um, citations of rap culture in there. And uh, of course, of Japanese monster movies. And um, it's, it's really good. Please check it out. It's only $10, the first volume. And it continues to be... Uh, an excellent, maybe the best ongoing series on the mark in the market right now. This is a big um, recommendation. Uh, next up, well, I don't have to say anything. That's the good thing about it. Mr. Miracle uh, by Tom King and also like maybe his Batman work, which I don't love as much as I did this, uh, but it's also pretty good, at least from time to time. Uh, and Mr. Miracle, well, the story, you know, it's a formal experiment in uh, superhero storytelling, which uh, went surprisingly well. It's maybe sometimes a little bit too serious and too um, austere in its um, 
in its rules of storytelling, you know, the nine grid panel and all this um, way of a very unique way of storytelling, but it's also hitting the emotional high points. And this is important. And this is why Tom King is uh, like the writer right now. And um, this is why it's in my top four. I think it was four, right? Yes, it was number four. Okay, now on to number three, which is a big surprise for me at least. I wouldn't have thought. It's Winnebago Graveyard by Steve Niles. And uh, what's the artist's name? Um, Alison Sampson, who did a tremendous job on the art, together with Stefan Pentro and Aiko Takayama on colors. This is a book to be experienced. Um, I won't spoil too much. I mean, there is not much to spoil. It's a very, very simple story. It's if you've ever seen a satanist, a movie about satanists from the 70s, um, it's exactly that. It's not innovative at all. But the existential angst uh, that goes into it and that, that leaps from those pages into your soul <laughs> is very, very real. Um, I was completely hooked by it. Uh, you read it in one sitting. It's a short read. It lives through the art and yes it is simple but you don't have to be innovative all the time you just have to be extremely good all the time and this stayed with me I still think about it and I'm still a little bit horrified when I think uh, um, about it it's um, it's a fantastic horror book I would love to have it in a bigger format to just like jump into those images um, if you haven't sampled it yes it's pretty expensive it's 17 dollars for a four issue book but if you like atmospheric comics uh, and if you like horror this is fantastic all right let me see if it still records oh no i can't see it i have to trust that it does okay this was number three now we come to number two, which is a comic I have um, already did a video on. It's Unreal City by Fantagraphics. It's by DJ Bryant. It's his first graphic novel um, and it's a beautiful one. Please um, just check the video that I did on him and on this book. It's simpler than me trying to recap it now. Um, it's it's a beautiful book and it's a very unique one too and uh, I'm very happy to name it number two of the last year because not many people talked about it and I think it's um, pretty much under it flew under the radar and it's very sad it's seventy dollars for this beautiful hardcover you have to have it if you like graphic novels uh, and on number one also a big surprise for me because I had it here for for a month or, or so or even two until I read it finally it's the drags by black mask comics it's um, by <laughs> Zach Thompson Lonnie Nadler and Eric Sa Sawatsky and um, it starts like every black mask book <laughs> As a social commentary uh, and you know it's also not I, I don't spoil anything if I tell you that it's about homeless people who are being turned into meat for um, rich people who move into all those fucked up neighborhoods and gentrify them so yes it sounds like another article out of a from from vox.com or whatever uh, but and there is a but, and I'm very happy about this. It turns uh, into something completely different. It's like the Magnus thing, you know, where they they hook uh, the people through um, through a character. Here they hook, they try to hook you into it through the social commentary thing, which is like, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. Um, um, and then 
it becomes really interesting. It's um, an exploration, an existential exploration about the relation between man and city, a man and his environment. And um, through exploring, of course, a lot of um, individual um, stories of homeless people and he wants to find his body He's on the he's he's looking for his body. He's pretty convinced that his body was turned into worst. Um and on on his way through the city he reflects upon different things. It it becomes very meta and uh the whole noir aspect of it, the fantastic artwork, the very um daring enterprise to turn this kind of um, social commentary book into something much more philosophical and meta I have to applaud and this is why it's my favorite comic of 2017 and I have another one one last recommendation for uh, German readers uh, it's Melville uh, Die Geschichte von Saul Miller it's uh, the second volume of a beautiful French a series which revolves about um, uh, a village and um, this one is about a guy who returns to this village and has to deal he's a he claims to have been a professor he's a a man who in in his midlife crisis who has failed to to achieve what he wanted to achieve and now has to deal with um, his past and with uh, yeah, the people that he, that he left behind. It's a beautiful book. Uh, it's 35 euros. It's not cheap. But yeah, it stayed with me the whole year. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you got some inspiration out of it. Uh, I also hope that you have some more recommendations for me if I missed out on some fantastic, great comics. Uh, leave it in the commentaries uh, and yeah, see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye